This year marks 10 years since we installed our first solar panel array to reduce our electricity bills, get paid for exporting excess solar and increase the value of our property. In this video, I'm going to share with you everything I've learned about solar storage systems over the last 10 years so you can start your journey today and benefit from my success and regrets. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, my name's Shan. If you're new here, let's recap what our solar storage system looks like. Shortly after we moved into our home in 2015, we had our first solar panel array installed. 10 285 watt panels installed on the south southwest facing side of our garage roof. A total of 2.85 kilowatt potential of solar, with a 3 kilowatt Solax inverter. This setup cost us £4,695 and came with a 25 year warranty for the solar panels and a 20 year inverter warranty. Fast forward 7 years in November 2022, we had more solar installed on the south southwest facing roof of our house. 14 390 watt panels giving us a total of 8.31 kilowatt potential of solar with a 3.6 kilowatt solar inverter. An 8.2 kilowatt hour give energy battery with a 3 kilowatt give energy AC inverter and an emergency power supply to keep our house powered up if we were to have a power cut. This new additional setup cost us £10,525, it came with a 10 year battery and inverter warranty and 25 year performance warranty on the panels. So that's what equipment I went with but what would I do if I were to be starting my solar and battery journey again today? Well for solar panels I would just try to get the largest capacity system I could. In other words, fill your roof space. It makes sense to do this as the panels themselves are relatively cheap, but it's the labour and scaffolding costs which make up the bulk of the cost. The most ideal roof orientation is south, followed by east and west, with north being the least desirable, often producing around 50% of that of a south facing array. One of my biggest regrets for my 2015 solar panel installation is not installing as many panels as I could on the main roof of the house but instead choosing to install these on the roof of our detached garage. The reason we did this is because the few houses on our estate with solar all had theirs installed on their detached garages and so I suppose we felt we just had to follow suit. As mad as it now sounds we were actually concerned it might affect the appearance and reduce the value of our house and I'll come back to how wrong we were on this later on. Since we first installed solar we have generated a whopping 29,879 kilowatt hours. I also learned from our initial install that it's actually very difficult to consume all the solar you'll produce. In fact, with us working during the day or generally being out and about, we probably only self-consumed around 30% of our generation from our 2015 array. Hence why in 2022 we added a battery to try and soak up some of that excess solar and use it later in the day when we were home. We have limited shading from the central roof elevation and so I chose not to explore microinverters which would have come at a significant cost for minimal benefit. Coming on to the inverter then, i definitely install at least a 5 kilowatt battery inverter, if not higher. In the early morning or night time when there is no or limited solar kicking about, our 3 kilowatt inverter works pretty well, and we can often run a couple of high consuming appliances like the microwave and the kettle at the same time and draw from the battery without needing the grid. But if we were to turn on our oven too, it would very quickly take us over our 3 kilowatt inverter output, requiring the grid to pick up the slack. And as we start to use even more high consuming electrical items at home, like induction hobs, heat pumps, alongside other stuff we're already using, this required output will only go up. A couple of years after we had our 2015 solar array installed, following some thunderstorms we appear to have had a power surge which wrecked our house alarm, router, but also sadly our solar panel inverter. Luckily the inverter was under warranty and the original installing company replaced it without any fuss. Which just goes to show the benefit of getting a warranty and using a reliable company that's going to be there in the future. If you're in the UK and you're looking to get solar panels and battery storage, you can get an installation quote from Oxus Engie and don't forget to quote the channel code 90239 to your solar specialist at any point before your final sales agreement is signed to get £100 off your solar installation quote. I'll drop some further details in the video description box below. So it'll come as no surprise that one of the extra things we wanted to have was a surge protector to cover the new 2022 solar array and battery, the existing solar array and also the entire house. From what I understand, surge protection devices are now considered to be a standard for solar PV installations. 
offering increased protection against transient surges. Next, the battery. This is probably the item I spent the most time thinking about in terms of how big should I go and where should I go. Looking at our energy consumption data in a 24 hour period, it was clear on average we use around 8 kilowatt hours of electricity during the day at peak rates and the same again off peak. I wanted to get a battery with enough usable capacity to cover 1.2 times our peak time use which would give us a bit of a buffer, but also a battery system which could later be expanded should our energy needs change. And we shouldn't forget that there is a decent solar array there to help keep the battery topped up, even in winter. I could have just got the biggest battery possible or several batteries at considerable expense, but I do believe there is a risk in being overly invested in something and the diminishing returns that come with it. The other big decision with the battery which caused much debate was its location. We had a few options of where it could go in our detached garage, on the outside of the house or in the loft. Ideally it would have gone in the garage with the rest of the existing solar equipment but this would have involved digging a trench from the main house to the garage to upgrade the cabling adding a good few hundred pounds on. Although IP65 rated and can be installed externally I wasn't keen on installing such an expensive bit of kit on the outside of my house exposed to the elements and prying eyes. So that left installing it in the loft. I did initially have some reservations about this too, mainly concerns about it overheating in the summer. However, after chatting it through with my installer and seeing several other people have had their batteries in their loft for years without any issue, I was soon reassured. Although I did ask my installer to add a main circuit fire alarm in the loft for some added peace of mind. Since our install we've had no problems with our battery being in the loft with temperatures at either range. However, a new publicly available specifications or PAS states that batteries shall not be installed in voids, roof spaces or lofts. Unless the new PAS is adopted as a British standard, it remains a recommendation only. But I think if I were to start again today, I would stick the batteries in the garage as I'll more than likely need to upgrade my EV charger and therefore the cabling in the future. However, the equipment is only one part of the equation to getting the most out of your solar storage system. It's very difficult unless you have a massive system to be totally off grid. So the other major part of this setup is what tariff you're on for importing and exporting your electricity. The best tariffs for solar and battery storage systems are those that have an off-peak period, typically overnight, where electricity can be imported at a cheaper rate than the expensive day rate electricity. There is a special key to unlock even more savings potential here and that is to own an electric vehicle. Owning a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle or PHEV or a full electric vehicle EV can allow you to access an electric vehicle tariff which offers even cheaper off-peak electricity. In the UK, Oxbus Engie and E.ON currently offer the best tariff options for solar, battery storage and EV owners. But which one is best for you? Well, in this video, I looked at the numbers in detail and I'll leave this video in the end screen if you want to check it out. And if you do choose to join Octopus or Eon, don't forget to check out the referral link in the video description box below for £50 account credit to get you started. But these off-peak tariffs can and do change. So subscribe to the channel for free as I regularly post updates on our solar and battery journey, including the best solar and battery tariffs to be on. Essentially what these tariffs allow you to do, and it's exactly what we do, is to top up your home storage battery overnight with cheap rate electricity and then use that energy during the day instead of using more expensive daytime electricity. It also means because your battery is already full, it doesn't need to fill up with solar, meaning more of your excess solar generation can be exported back to the grid for an attractive export payment. What I've found works quite well is just to be boring and to set and forget on a tariff that works for me. Charging the battery during the cheap hours and letting the solar panels and battery do their thing. We also try to run whatever else we can during these off-peak hours, including charging the car, running our heat pump tumble dryer, dishwasher and whatever else we can get in that off-peak period. This has led us to consume over 98% of our electricity in the off-peak period, averaging a price of under 7p per kilo hour. This allows us to export as much solar generation as we can during the day, which brings us nicely on to export tariffs. These are typically separate to import tariffs and you'll need the documentation supplied by your installer to sign up and get paid by your chosen electricity company. For simplicity, solar and battery owners often have their import and export tariffs with the same provider. 
but there is nothing to stop you from having your import with one company and export with another. Just be aware that most energy companies will incentivize you to have your import and export with them by offering you a higher export rate than if you were to only have your export set up with them. You'll also need a smart meter that is capable of sending half hourly data to your energy supplier, allowing them to bill you correctly depending on the time of day you use the electricity. One of the incidental benefits of us getting a solar storage system installed is that we're now more aware of our energy use. An example of this is our nine kilowatt electric showers. I didn't quite realize when we moved into our house quite how much power these electric showers draw. With this knowledge, we've been able to adjust which shower we use depending on the time of day. We're up early most mornings during the week before 7 a.m., which is when our cheap off-peak tariff ends. And it's therefore this time that we will choose to use our electric showers. Also during these cheap off-peak hours, we use our two electric immersions to heat up the water in our mammoth 300 liter super insulated hot water tank. This then gives us plenty of hot water for the rest of the day to use in the kitchen, bathrooms and shower supplied by our hot water tank. And this means we've just not had to use as much gas to heat our hot water. During the day, you can be involved as much or as little as you want. It's easy to monitor performance via an app on my phone or wall tablet that has a simple dashboard which shows how much solar energy we're producing, how much energy we're using as a household, how much charge is left in the battery and how much we're exporting back to the grid. Of course, you don't have to look at it at all if you don't want to. You can just let it do its thing. Over the last 10 years, I've had very little to no maintenance to do for our solar panel arrays. But occasionally, I have knocked some snow off our solar panels on our detached garage using a long reach soft brush. The surface of the solar panels are designed to be self-cleaning. In the UK, we get regular rainfall, and this helps clear away any dust and dirt from the surface of our solar panels. You can get companies that will come out and clean them for you, but I suspect you'd not recoup the price paid for such a service. It's important to consider the long-term economics of solar panels. While it took us years to fully recoup our initial investment, nine years to be exact for our first system, remember that electricity rates are likely to rise over time. This means by not having to import expensive energy from the grid, our savings have increased year on year. Furthermore, export payments, whilst not guaranteed, have also increased. With our 2022 solar and battery installation, we're projected to pay that off in around six to seven years. After running my numbers, we could be looking at a tidy profit of around £17,020.67 in savings and export payments over the next 15 years. But that's not all. Some reports online suggest solar panels can add anywhere between 3 to 14% to the value of your home by increasing its EPC, future proofing for expanding green technologies such as heat pumps and generating payments through solar exports. Even if we use the most conservative figure of 3%, we could be looking to add at least £16,500 to our property's value based on current valuations. That's £33,520.67 without considering inflation. If we factored in a total inflation figure of 2%, that could rise to £43,576.87, which is an impressive payback on our initial £15,520 spend. Not to mention some peace of mind, that even if electricity prices rise further, we can reduce our electricity bills and bring in some export payments to provide a buffer in the future. Finally, don't forget the environmental impact. Over the past decade, we've significantly reduced our carbon footprint by a massive 6.63 tonnes. It's a great feeling knowing you're contributing to a sustainable future, all whilst reducing your energy bills. Like with most technology, things change on an almost yearly basis. There are things I'd do differently if I started my solar and battery journey today. But one thing is for sure, I'd definitely do it again. Have you got a solar storage system already, or are you looking to add these technologies to your home? I'd love to know your biggest regrets, concerns, or wins in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.